Welcome to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Together, we're exploring the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Tony Hare is an independent certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, author and inspirational speaker who lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's degree in pastoral counseling, and a doctorate of philosophy in Christian counseling. Dan DeBruler is a retired U.S. Army communications specialist and has spent more than 20 years encouraging listeners through Christian radio. And we are so glad to be with you this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Your Life. You know, we're going to take a look at a really serious relationship, something we all need to consider, and perhaps you've read this before. It comes from John chapter 15, and it's interesting, just about the whole chapter here is written in red letters. Of course, red letters indicating that these are things that Jesus said. These are words that Jesus spoke. I'm going to read to you from that, from the vine and the branches, beginning at John 15, verse 1. I am the true true vine. And my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes. And he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean, it says in verse 3, because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you, just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine. Neither can you unless you remain in me. Continuing in verse 5, it says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit, because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch, and he withers. They gather them, they throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, it says in verse 7, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. And then it concludes with this in verse 8 of John 15. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Now that is talking about such a vital relationship between the Father and the Son, and between the Son and us, the one whose name that we claim, Jesus Christ. It begins to talk about how vital that relationship is that we cannot even We can't hope to produce anything lest we be in the vine and let that vine be part of everything that gives us life in this world. Dr. Hare, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you're having a fantastic afternoon. (laughs) I have to I have to laugh, uh, laugh Dan, because it's like we're in a <laughs> we run the four forty, we pass the baton. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's great being here today with you, and I, I love the way you just did that. Um, and yes, in our discussion today, and looking at John chapter fifteen, and something you was bringing out that relationship uh, portion, because it, it is important for us to realize, Dan, and more so as I have gone through Monday and just today, and and, and going looking at Sunday. Uh, Easter Sunday, and we begin to think more about uh, we can't really fulfill our, you know, potential without being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And in this particular um, uh, uh, chapter, um, he wants us to clearly understand, John did, uh, want us to understand, putting it in a context in a way that we could understand it. Because if we uh, look at our grandparents, especially my grandmother uh, back in the day, and, and a lot of uh, of the senior persons in our church who love to plant flowers and things of that nature, and there is a special relationship between the plant and the soil. And that plant can't reach its full potential uh, without a relationship to the soil. And the same thing holds true for, for, for us without a relationship with the vine. It is most difficult for us to achieve anything in life, to bear fruit, which is most important. And a lot of times, many of us today, if we look from January to where we are in April, you know, the fourth month of 2023. And I know we've had a lot of time to look at where we are now versus where we said we wanted to be January the 1st, New Year's. And we have to, as we assess uh, 
uh, that time that has passed, we have to ask ourselves if we are where we said we wanted to be after the first quarter. We have to ask ourselves, are we or have we achieved the things that we said we wanted to achieve? Now, remember, we made these statements, and usually at the beginning of the year, we always say the Lord's will, and we're so excited about what God's going to do in the beginning, and we have to realize that God has already done everything He is going to do. It is based on what He has done, what will be revealed to us based on what we continue to do as a result of being in a relationship with him. Because, you know, the first of every year, we're always, I mean, we, we, we're gun ho And as time goes on, things uh, happen in life uh, just as if you were pulling a plant up from the soil. And that plant, the very moment you begin to pull it up out of the soil or the wind begins to blow it so hard that it begins to uh, become disconnected from the soil, death is immediate to whatever was going to be. Death is immediate to that potential. So when we really, really, really think about where we are right now, are we really in an intimate, true relationship with the vine? Because the vine is, the gardener's taking care of the vine. It is the branches that bear the fruit. See, uh, that is so important. And uh, are we truly connected to the vine? You know, Dan, are we truly connected to the vine? We look at the results of whatever it is that we're trying to achieve. Are we trying to do it on our own? Yeah, you know, when I when I read this passage, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can't help but think about this apple tree mm-hmm. that's just outside my door. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you know, every year the blossoms come. And and as, as the blossoms begin to to fade away, yes, well, sir. the fruit comes behind that, and uh-huh. and I know. But when I when I go on and I read about the father pruning the branches, yes. I completely understand, uh-huh. you know, because because that tree will grow all sorts of wonky ways, <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll have a branch going eight feet over that way, yes. a little old thing that can't, can't even hold fruit, and if mm-hmm. if it does, the the fruit will be puny because it's so it's so far away, but. As I read this, and I read about the discipline that that this is this is talking about mm-hmm. about us staying close to the store, source, mm-hmm. yes. remaining close to that which gives us life. Yes, I think about how we, you know, as as humans, we go to that apple tree, mm-hmm. and and before those blossoms come out, hopefully, <laughs> we we go out there and we begin to trim those branches to to give it shape because we know that when we trim off those things that are unnecessary when we trim off those wonky branches <laughs> and it, it causes the, the the fruit to produce uh, more fully on the branches that remain and this is part of what um, Jesus is talking about mm-hmm. here he's talking about allowing the father to tend the garden of our life to tend that tree in our life to prune back the things that that don't produce to, to get rid of the things like we do with mm-hmm. with our um, New Year's resolution, where we say, well, I'm going to get rid of this, that's got to go, I'm never doing this one again, yes. and, and realizing what really does matter, and allowing the fruit, the room that it needs to grow mm-hmm. as we connect it more fully to the source. And then, Dan, you know, when he says, I am the true vine, well, that really means that there are some vines that aren't true. There are some things that are false that we get connected to. And so we just think about education. We think about sports. Uh, we think about those other things that we get so connected to that does not help us fulfill our true potential. We fulfill a potential, but it's Tony's. It's what Tony wants to do. you know. And so if I'm not connected to the true vine, then what vine are you connected to? Because those vines uh, that are not the source of life, but they are the source to a way of life in life, in the Zoe, in the Z-O-E, in the true life, there there is uh, a life to be lived in the true life. And if we don't stay connected to the true vine, then we will find ourselves living based on my education, based on what I may drive, based on whatever I decide to tie myself to, a material thing. I may tie myself to a relationship with a person who has clout. I may tie myself to. But the thing is, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He's the one who cares for me, and he's the one who cares for you because 
because you're connected to me. Now, whatever he has said that I should do, you will also become a recipient of that if you are in a relationship with me. That's why I need you to stay close to me. That's because if the father taking care of me, you're automatically going to be taken care of because we family. You know, we have been on the air. This is this is the 111th episode wow. of, of, of Your Life. That is wow. And I think out of those 111, <laughs> roughly 111 of them came back down to identity. They came <laughs> yes. back down to who we are, who God is, wow. and who we are yes. in Christ. Yes. It all yes. comes down to that one thing, recognizing who is who and what is what. Mm-hmm. This is important. And, and when you look at the Bible and you begin yes. to really break it down, Mm-hmm. The Bible's about identity as well. Yes, right. It's about absolutely. who God is, who we are, and who we are in Christ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, then, you know, um, and those statements that he identifies the Father, he identifies himself, and he identifies who we are. And it's amazing that I look over my entire life and seeing who Jesus says that I am. I'm the branch connected to the vine, but that branch can bear fruit. And I have not always identified with being the branch. I wanted to be whatever Tony felt like he wanted to be, which caused me not to um, uh, be obedient to the course of life that God had for me. But thank God he allows us, through his grace and mercy, to live long enough. He allows us to make bad decisions. You know what I'm saying? Because it is in the decisions that we call bad that we have the opportunity to turn around and see the truth. And he takes the time to work with us. He doesn't cut us away or th- and throw uh, it, throw the, the, the branch away, but he, he doesn't take it away. He lifts it up so that we can get the sun that's necessary connected to the vine because he won't disconnect you from the vine. You actually do that yourself by not Bearing fruit, which I, which shows that you are not a part of the vine. You just hanging around. Someone like like Judas was one of the disciples, but Judas was not a true disciple. He was one of the ones that was hanging around. And we don't want to be a, a branch that's just hanging on. You know, we actually want to be a branch that's bearing fruit. You know, whenever you see, uh, my wife loves uh, grape vines, and we actually have one in our yard. And uh, whenever you see. Uh, fruit that consumes itself, you know, that fruit wasn't meant for anyone else. And uh, uh, trees uh, don't eat their own fruit. We produce the fruit for other people. And uh, we have to ask ourselves, am I in an intimate relationship with Christ that the fruit that my life produces will serve those who he sends into my life? See, and that's important to recognize, too, as mm-hmm. we're looking at identity. Um, who are we? Who yes. is God? Who are yes. we in Christ? Yes. Who are we called to be in this world? Yes. You know, we have this, this big promise and a dire warning um, in verses mm-hmm. 5 and 6 yes, of sir. John 15. Okay. It says, the one who remains in me and mm-hmm. I in him produces much fruit because yes. you can do nothing without me. Mm-hmm. But then it goes on to say, anyone who does not remain in me, yes. he's thrown aside yes. like a branch and he withers. Yes. They gather them, they throw them into the fire, and they are burned. So it's saying here, mm-hmm. this, this is a um, prediction? Is that, is that, that's not a good word. <laughs> this, is, this is the projection of what's going to mm-hmm. happen if, mm-hmm. if, we are, if we choose not to live in Christ. You know, as much mm-hmm. as He loves us, as much as He wants us to produce fruit, as much as He gives us room to produce fruit and to be who we're called to be in this world, He's saying if we do not remain in Him, there's no real hope beyond this life. Yes, and, and then I see this as a call to Tony to be responsible. Mm. It is up to me to remain in him. Because if I remain in him, yes, he will remain in me. And the results will be that I will produce not some fruit, but much fruit. Because he will continue to reveal himself through me and all that he is. And it's options we have here. We can every every day that you and I wake up, Dan, every day that everyone in this entire world gets the opportunity to inhale and exhale, we have to make a choice. Are we going to remain in him where we can bear much fruit? Or are we going to choose to do what we want to do, which will be nothing 
compared to the success that he has for us over here in remaining with him in this relationship. So we must take responsibility for that. And a lot of times we don't want to take responsibility for having to remain in Christ. It's as if we want the Lord take this from me, but he didn't give it to you. Whatever it is that you want him to take from me, whatever it is that I want him to take from me, he didn't give it to me. Because if he take it and I haven't, uh, released it, you know, mentally. I haven't released it emotionally. Uh, uh, I'm going to pick it back up again just as soon as he goes around the corner. So I have to lay it down. You know, I have to allow him to work mightily through me by remaining him. I have the Holy Spirit in me. It gives me the power to lay the blunt down. Give me the power to lay the alcohol down. It gives me the power to lay the opioids down. It gives me the power to love. It we'll gives be me right the power back with more of this week. All your of life. this is a direct result of remaining in him because in him is everything that I need in life. So as we look at this, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of uh, uh, church speak today, uh-huh. a, lot, a lot of Bible speak. <laughs> what, what does that look like for, for in a practical life? You know, yes. uh, somebody who, who is trying to, who's trying to take the edges off yes. of, of their life. You know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the life that, that we have lived up to the point we, yes. we come into Christ. And how do, how do we begin to, to flesh that out? How do we remain close? How do we remain close, and how can we tell if we're truly producing fruit? I think that one of the things we have to look at, just let's look at it through the lens of a physical illustration. Your mom, uh, as a, you, you, everyone who has children or everyone has, who has been told, um, the mom or dad says, hey, stay in the yard. Don't go out the yard, all right? Remain in the yard. He's saying, remain in me, because outside of me is danger. The house that the parents still on, there's a street outside of the fence. You know, you go out the yard, it's a possibility you could hit, get hit by a car. But if you stay in the yard, I can watch over you. There's safety in the yard. In the yard, you can bear fruit, you see, because you're going to be close to me. And everything that I have, you have. You can make more out of what I have. Youth, think about it from the perspective of children. Our parents give us birth. We remain with them until it's time for us to leave the home. But the whole while that we are remaining with them, they're feeding us the wisdom of life. So that when we do go out because we're connected to them, we're able to bear fruit, that which they've sown into us. It will manifest itself because it is truly in us. Whenever we decide to disconnect, from our families, and we have a lot of individuals who are totally disconnected from their parents. They didn't stay long enough to truly get an understanding of the teaching the parents were trying to give them. And we go out and we do it, you know, on our own. Well, we don't bear good fruit. See, we don't because there, there's some bad fruit and there's some good fruit. There's fruit that does good for people and feeds people. And then there's that fruit that just tears folk down. We have to remain in him so that we take the word of God here. Each uh, word that we have here is a seed. And in that seed is the hope for a better day, a better tomorrow, a better life for Tony. But if you're a believer and you're not studying the word of God How can you bear fruit if you're a believer and you're not spending quality time with God? Because he's telling us the way to go. He's already had all of this planned out. And all we have to do is try him. And we don't have to try him for a long time. We can try him for a short period of time because he's true to his word. An individual knows that they are bearing fruit. (laughs) And it's an inside out experience. It's not an outside in experience bearing fruit. So from the inside, I have everything. I have love in me. So if I'm loving those who I run into, I'm bearing fruit. I have joy in me. So if I'm joyful, even in the most in the worst situations, now I'm bearing fruit because I'm creating an environment of joy where others can feel comfortable with being joyful. They maybe even ask me for the reason of the hope that is in me, and I can share that with them, which brings them back in line with who they are in him. So we, we know we're bearing fruit when we're around people 
and we're bringing the joy of the Lord. We're changing the environment that we're in. That's when we know we're bearing fruit. When you can change, you walk into a room, Dan, and things are, are solemn. They just, you know, something's just not right about the room. But Dan walks in the room and your smile, see, how you function and move in that room, everybody sees something different. As fruit just walked in the room. Fruit just changed the atmosphere in the room. Now, if you walk into a room and you bring in gloom, more gloom in the room, now, no, you're not bearing any fruit. You know what I'm saying? You're coming mm-hmm. in to take, you know, from uh, what's there or to add more of your gloom and sorrow to the room. It's, 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 it's not difficult um, uh, to understand whether or not you're bearing fruit because there are those, Dan, and you may have run across some of them, and I ask you this, have you ever run across people who always going through something? They ain't never happy, but they're Christians. They, but they aren't ever having a great day. Have you ever run across those people? <laughs> uh, true story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this weekend, my wife and I, were, <laughs> we were watching a movie, and it was a Christian movie. Yes. It, it was about a Christian circumstance. Mm-hmm. and. And we were like an hour and a half in, and I, and I said to my wife, I don't think there's been a happy moment in this whole show, you know, and it's, it's about people who, who want to serve the Lord. Yes. And, and I thought, what is going on? You know, what, what, is, what is our view of the world that, that perhaps, you know, if we're not honestly walking closely with God, that we feel like perhaps the world owes us a little something? I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. But as I watched this movie, you know, and I said that to my wife, I don't think there's been a happy moment in this whole yes. thing. Well, then something good happened okay. right, right, right then. And it, it, I looked up, <laughs> I looked at the time and I thought, okay, they got like 15 minutes <laughs> left <laughs> to, to resolve this. And uh, she was ready to walk out of the room. I was like, hang on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, saw, mm-hmm. I said, they finally got to a happy place. I want to see how this ends. But you're right. You know, if we, if we are carrying that gloom, if we're carrying the dark, if we're carrying our hurts around with us, you know, and, and that's what we're wearing yes. on our forearms mm-hmm. rather than the joy that we've been given, yes. rather than the peace that we have been told to spread, rather than the hope that we hold to mm-hmm. in this faith in Christ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, 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 yeah, it's fruit, mm-hmm. but, it, but it's, an, it's a fruit that no one wants to take of. It's not mm-hmm. what we're talking about. You know, Jesus wraps up this particular passage of scripture saying my father is glorified by this yes. that you produce much fruit yes. and prove to be my disciples that's right you know and and what does he teach his disciples to do they taught him they he taught them how to relate to god how yes. to relate to people how to love god how to love people yeah. you know he taught the, yes. the 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 greatest commandment and the second one that's like it loving god mm-hmm. loving people yes so if we're not bearing that fruit we don't look much like the disciples that he was talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, and, it, and to to just really answer your question, to uh, we know we're being fruitful when we are being useful and productive. That's what brings glory to God when we're being useful and productive. Everyone has a gift that God has blessed them with sown into them. To be fruitful is to exercise that gift, to allow that gift to be useful for the kingdom of God, for the good of others, and for the glory of God. A lot of us do not use that which God has given to us. There are, there are, there are men and women who can sow. There are men and women who can play every, play an instrument. Oh, there are men and women who can sing like none other, and no, but no one's heard their song. There are men and women who can write great music, but they've never written. Who, there are men and women who have great stories in them, great testimonies that could become books or devotionals every morning, things to inspire and encourage people, but they don't use them. So they aren't bearing fruit. The fruit's there. So now what happens, God allows trials to come into our lives because it is the trials and circumstances of life that push us to the point to be productive. Because we realize we have to do something. And sometimes it is the, the, the mind or the brain is at its best work during a crisis. Because you begin to search every corner of your mind. You begin to search out every uh, a solution possible that to, to resolve whatever it is that you may be going through. And if, if, if we, as believers, would um, understand 
that in order to bear fruit, then fruit must be present before it's seen because I'm bearing it. I have to bear. It has to produce itself. It comes from within me. So it's in me. It's there. But are we aware that it's there? We've been indoctrinated in the world to go outside looking for what we can produce. Uh, uh, the Model T Ford, the Henry, the, the Henry Ford, came, that came from within him, came out of his mind. You know, all of these inventions that, that we see, th- this comes out of the mind of people, their, their ability to become useful and productive. Every idea, there are people right now, Dan, that have some awesome ideas, but have not taken the opportunity to uh, produce that idea, to make that, uh, to bring it to fruition, to make a reality out of it. They just continue to think about it. And they continue to look for others to do it. Well, you know, um, she could do it. Well, you know, Julie sure has a, a way with food. You know, she sure can cook. Well, you can do something too. But you don't ever see yourself when you look in the mirror. What do you see? Do you see all the fruit that God has planted in you? I mean, there's so much to you when you look in the mirror every day. There's more to you than what you see. People have to use it, Dan. See, and this is why it's so important for us to remain in the vine, as as Jesus says. You know, because that's where... That's where we find this this hope that we hold yes. on to. I mean, I I have done this. I've been yes. I've been in the meeting, and you know, uh, I, I point out the problem, mm-hmm. but I don't offer anything <laughs> in in return. And I've had I've had you know somebody else in the meeting or, yes, or who was leading the meeting even yes, turn and say, "So what do you suggest?" Mm-hmm. And I got nothing, you know, because I'm I'm so I'm so connected to the problem. I mm-hmm. haven't I haven't leaned into into the solution. I haven't leaned you know in the yes, spiritual sir. sense into the hope mm-hmm. that I have been given yes you know every every week week in week out i have the opportunity to review countless songs from fantastic writers amazing musicians and often i'll see a song or i'll see the lyric of a song and i realize it's pointing out all the problem but it's offering no solution Mm -hmm. man if we are connected to the vine Mm -hmm. if we are in touch with this hope that we have been given that we've been entrusted with to share with others We'll have the solution. We'll Absolutely. be able to speak yes. that solution. That's bearing fruit Absolutely. in this world. Absolutely. We are actually, and you just think about this, God's big idea. We are the solution to the issues or problems, or circumstances, whatever tag we might put on them for the world. We are the solution. But we stay in our heads so much just thinking about what we could do, not what we should do, what we could do. And because we say what we could do, we never act on what we should do because we never move beyond the could because immediately something comes up and and we don't have to find this thing here. This negativity is all a part of the fall. See, it's going to show up. There is going to be something that shows up every time that you think you can do something. There's going to be another thought that appears to say, well, I don't know. Uh, do you really think it? Well, do you think it? So you're having a conversation, the old you and the new you. If we don't remain, if we don't feed the spirit scripture, then the flesh will rule us even though we are believers. We will live a carnal life and never bear the fruit that God has placed within us to glorify his name and to serve others. God's got a big plan for all of us. Yes, he and does. Jesus was talking all about it. I encourage you to take a moment, go look up John chapter 15, mm-hmm. verses 1 through 8, and see what Jesus himself is saying to you today. I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. You've been listening to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Join us again next time as we explore the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Your Life airs Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on Christian 105.7, and you can always download, listen, and share online. Just look for Your Life wherever you listen to podcasts.